we exalt your holy name. Thank you for being who you are, beautiful Father, good Lord. May you be exalted. Lord, we bow before you this morning in adoration to say glory, honor, power, majesty be to your holy name. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We give Elohim praise for how he's, you know, seen us through um, this far. And we thank him. And we've been studying on the SOA. And then we thank the Lord for the insight and deep revelations he's given, you know, beyond the surface. Um, you know, it's been thought over the years. It's just thrown out there. Oh, so I went to sow. And then one, some set of people will take it out. Oh, is on evangelism. Some will not take it. Some will take it. Some will do this. But when you look down deeper into this, you see so many as it has to do with anyone. So there's no pointing of finger to any person, or any group of people or individuals. There's no actually one way you can look at it. But if you go in deep, the Lord will explain this from various angles, what he meant. And by the grace of God, we've been able to look at the wayside. Um, we know what the wayside is. Anything wayside is wayside. It's only good for the birds. And when it goes on the wayside, um, actually you don't pick them because on the wayside, you know, duck pool, fowls, all there, people speak on the wayside. People drop off what they've eaten, litters all over. Wayside has always been wayside. Even on the major roads <coughs> where you're going, the grasses by the wayside are more dusty, you know, or dustier than the other ones. So we know what a wayside is. No wonder it's only good for the birds. And the Lord helped us to really look at some words. Um, that's the way it has gone. Satan immediately takes them. And that's why don't we can see all over the world. The word of the Lord is going. Preachings are going. People are sick. People are going through difficulties. Yet their hearts are blocked. They don't want to know about the Lord. Is the last thing they want to take don't tell them even at dying bed they can't even receive prayers even with all these things happening with all the lockdown all their mind is is oh please can you unlock for what to go and then go back again to pleasures and then get the diseases even though the government is staying stay at home their heart is they just want to is all out there nothing no the bible says in the book of um, romans one that because they refused to acknowledge him he gave them over to a heart that mm. and here in in matthew chapter 13 jesus saying that hearing they will not hear they can't even see they can't discern then we moved over to the second level and that second level are the seeds that fell in a little bit in 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 the into the inner ground but then the bible says they were among the stones they're among the rocks so they had no roots so they sprang up and just died at the very scourge of the first sun because there's no root and the lord helped us to look at that and then the importance of having a root in yeshua if you don't have a root in him the enemy and the son of life will scourge you up. And that's what we see a lot today in churches. People have been in church. They got the gospel. They received it with joy. But because nobody taught them, nobody showed them, nobody took time to explain to them and nurture them and admonish them, the Lord says teaching them. Not nothing. No doctrine. Nothing. So what happens? They have no root. And because they have no root, the slightest persecution, the slightest trial, sickness, whatever that came, took them off. And then when we look at the, that root again, we can liken it, brethren, to um, just like a child that was just came out, unfortunately, from a man or a woman who is a drunk and who do not behave well. Why, does, why that child was in the womb? That child was battered. Yes, conception has happened with drugs and alcohol. 
alcohol, alcohol, and when that child comes out, you know, one of the days I was following a very young lady, I don't think she would be more than 15 or 16, she was on the phone, and then the little kid her was on the, um, the pram, in the pram, and then she was, you know, going and then angrily talking on the phone, and then I looked at, I couldn't help following her, because I looked at the baby, the toes have turned blue. She didn't even cover. There was no socks. There was no this and that child was this way. Very flimsy um, um, flannel on top of that child. And I had to go. I had to go. Brennan is still on my eyes to tell her, please cover this child. You can imagine this young child being born by another young child who will look after each other. And then this child grows up like this. Some, sometimes these children don't even know who the dad is. Sometimes they are left to cry and cry and cry until they are tired. They get to school, they look at other children, looking very good, new socks, new bag, new, they have nothing, absolutely nothing. And these children only come back home, no heater in the house, so cold because mom doesn't care at all. Not that she doesn't care, she also has a problem that need, she needs to be helped. Then this child keep growing, go to school, see other children being picked up by parents, loved. He or she comes back to only mash and uh, sausage, morning, afternoon, night, nothing. By the time they are six, seven, eight, nine, they go into shop, they will steal and they will be caught. By 12 years, 13, they've gone into first prison, 17, third or fourth. And then by 18, the world has collapsed on them. They are angry, they are bitter, they've gone. You can blame them, but please, before you blame them, look at what these children have gone through. They had no root, absolutely no root. And that root makes for all the bizarre behaviors, on the antisocial behaviors. It's one thing to put them in prison and speak evil about them. It's another thing to look at what they didn't bargain for, what wasn't their fault at all, but that was how harsh life has been on them now brethren take it back again to the church when you belong to a church where there is no root although with joy you've received life in christ jesus you're going to be like one of these young people who had no root they had no root there's nothing to go back to oh people say they are on the street they have to be on the street what are they going back home to nothing nothing some of them the benches no even in any chair at home beds gone they don't the dresses you see them wearing is it that too they have so also anyone in the church you have no root you belong to where you are not taught it's all superficial dancing so all those biggie biggie activities and go you will have no root when it comes to the harshness of satan coming on you you will collapse immediately you will cave in into them so brethren if you're listening to me as we said last saturday you are a pastor make sure you're a responsible parent and make sure that those the lord has committed into your hand they are they have roots if you're not a teacher get in one that's why we're talking about the fivefold ministry don't sit on top of them and you're bringing up children in the lord who do not know by the time they get angry. No wonder a lot of them backslide. When they backslide, they don't look back. No wonder a lot of them says, oh, I don't, I don't do church. Well, you don't do church. Nobody does church anyway because church is churchianity. So when you hear that phrase, I don't do church, that's because where they were, we're doing church. No roots in them. And that's why children come up and some people can say, oh, why did these God say I'm a jealous God? That was why they left Christianity to get into secular humanism and be part of those troubling the gospel. Why? Because there was no root. They stayed where there's no root. So please, as you're listening, tell the Lord, anywhere, anyhow, I'm being planted on the stone, on the rock. Today, Lord, I'll find myself on the good ground. So we move today to look at the thorns. The thorns. Let's look again at the account of Matthew. If um, For those who are listening to this for the first time, we're looking at the parable of the sower. And then we've looked at it from the account of Matthew in Matthew chapter 13, the account of Mark in Mark chapter 4, and from the account of Luke in Luke chapter 8. 
and then we've read it so take your time to read it now we now go straight to look at the thorns those that fell among the thorns you know they uh, they fell a little bit inner in the inner ground but there were the thorns there and the bible says let's look at the account of um matthew mark and the look it says and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them this is matthew talking and now mark says and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit that's mark and luke said and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it grew together with it and choked it so whether it sprang up whether it grew up whether it grew together with it remember thorn is a thorn it's spiky it pricks it goes in so no living thing can stay among thorns because thorns are for destruction they are they hot they hot so much they will prick in depending on how sharp and then how long they are they will go in and when they go in they will cause bleeding they will cause infection they will cause septicemia they will cause death and if they are longer they can go in through the heart depending they choke up nobody can be comfortable among thorns nobody can sleep among thorns nobody can have peace among thorns nobody can grow among it now let's see the explanation our lord yeshua gave from the three accounts in matthew he says he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this word and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful i love the way they put it all comma one care of the world of these words two deceitfulness of the riches three choke it and four it becomes unfruitful and mark says and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things mark added an extra and the extra he added was, and the lust of other things entering in, took the world and it becomes unfruitful. So while Matthew laid the, the basics, the outline, Mark says, hang on, there's one thing again I need to add. And the lust of other things entering in. So not only the deceitfulness of riches, not only the deceit of this world, but other things entering in. May the Lord help us to look out for those other things. Now, let's see what Luke now said. Luke now says, mm, there's one bit at the last bit I needed to add at the end of it. And he said, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and the riches. And then he added pleasures of this life. And finally, he said, and bring no fruit to perfection. So even if they wriggle out to grow among those, they will bring no fruit to perfection. Their fruit will be corrupted. Their fruit will not be matured. The fruit will fall out before, like we studied in the fig tree. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, it's like a fig tree that sheds its fruit in on, on, in, 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 on in early when the wind comes so here the bible says there and bring no fruit to perfection we will look at that so let's see straight into the scriptures because when you're talking about these people are looking at what you will say oh and they will say oh that's them the holiness people this all biblical people all these archaic people oh they want us to look like them they want us to behave like them no they can't make us look like them or do this no 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 let's go now to the scriptures that's why when i come to this i always like to go so that nobody says this person said that or that now this is the word Let's see some examples. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. Paul said, For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. Look, brethren, everyone sitting out there, if you love this present world more than what is in you, you are growing among thorns. 
No wonder people are in church, but their ministries are not fulfilled. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. In one angle, they do good and do it to the best. To the best, you will wonder what a wonderful brother, what a wonderful sister. At the same time, they fall woefully to the floor that you'll be so shocked at what they are doing. They are growing among thorns. Demas forsook Paul for the love of this present world. And he's departed unto Thessalonica. Christian, Christian to Galatia, Titus to Damasia. But look at Luke chapter 18, verse 23 to 25. And when he had these, he was so sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, Very hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. For those that count their riches to them. For those that get their joy from their bank account. For those that get their joy from how many houses and how many things they have got. For those that get their joy by, you know, their influence and affluence. Those that all these things matter a lot. Deceitfulness of riches. Brethren, there is no better time to talk about the deceitfulness of riches to the world than this time. This, if we're talking about this in 2019, there may be stones hauling there and there. But right now, with the pandemic around the world, people really do not care. Everybody was running. People left their cars, their big houses to run out to the villages where they can hide. Where are those riches? Where are those things? Everybody running. Even to the mountains they wouldn't have lived. Left their big houses, their posh in the cities and everybody is. That's how it spread. People were running to save, to ground, to save grounds. Running to villages. Running to anywhere they think they can run to. And there is they. Now those things are left. Houses are empty. Nobody wants to come in. Cars are packed. For two months, three months, like hours packed on the on the drive now. No one had gone into it. This is seven, eight week going on. Where are those cars? Everyone is locked down. Where are those houses? Deceitfulness of riches. A lot refused Jesus because of theater. Theaters are locked. A lot refused Jesus because of pop. Pops are locked. No alcohol, no drink anywhere. A, a lot... A lot rejected Jesus because of work, wealth, school, academics. Where are they? All schools locked. Work, nobody's going. The government is now a little bit, you know, trying to let people out to tell you, to be honest, if you go back, more than 60% will not be happy to move out until they hear that nothing is out there again. But what can they do? What will they do? Some people, their hearts have jumped up that they're going to go back to work while the demons are still out there and nothing to tame them. But brethren, deceitfulness of riches, all of us have now seen that this flesh is nothing. Those things are nothing. What will it profit a man to gain the world? Let's go back again. So if you're keeping back, if you're still holding on to if you're still latching on to anything, please, today, let go. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look, brethren, it's all cause for, if you don't renew this mind, you will not do what is acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. If you remain in cares of this world, if you remain in cares of yourself and what you think and what you hold on to, they will deny you of precious things. You may not know little, little things. It will deny you total submission. Total submission. The Bible says we, we are short of one, we are guilty of all. Some Christians are 
you know what this makes some christians is to be the you know the lord just put that phrase in my mouth in my brain this morning i just wrote it down spot the different christians spot the different christians if you don't understand what i mean you know what spot the difference means they can keep two glasses of water and ask you to spot the difference they can put two um, images and ask you to spot the difference this morning he said to me they watch the statement phrase just came to me spot the different christians and i'm like wow lord this is new what does it mean he says there are those christians when they're sitting with unbelievers you can't spot it will be difficult to spot the difference now brethren check where you're sitting if we move you out now and put you in the public in the office at school at workplace at home can it be spot the difference a lot so if you're enjoying it the Lord says today, please don't be the spot the different Christian. Who are the spot the different Christians? When you look at the world and look at them, the same. The eyes of the world and their eyes, the same. The leg of the world and the leg of and their legs, the same. Their speeches and the speeches of the world, the same. Their character and the character of the world, the same. And you are taking your time to spot the difference. May that not be you. May that not be me. Hallelujah. Never be a spot the Christian different. Make sure that it is distinct. Second Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 16. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship are righteousness with unrighteousness? And what common have light with darkness, brethren? Have you read it this way? If you read it through like um, what kind, oh, don't, don't be equally yoked with believers, but what different, and you miss it. Read it the way it is and follow me as we read it. Be not equally yoked together with unbelievers. Ah. And so what's the next? For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? What? It's like a, someone asking you, what? Did it stop there? No. And what communion had light with darkness? Can you see that? New, new nature and old nature? And what concord had Christ with Belia? What? What is the commonality? There's none. You can spot the difference. You cannot compare the two. Not to talk of taking time. To spot it. No. Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? What part? There's nothing anymore. The old life is crucified with Yeshua. He's gone and he's gone. We are now in the new nature. And in the new life. And let's continue. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? Wow. The Bible says that our body is the temple of the living God. God do not inhabit again in the temple built with hands anymore. So not the church, but it's this body that is the temple. This particular body you are looking at. I want you to touch yours. Touch your, this body. That's the temple in the new realm, in the circumcised realm, in the new fellowship, in the new kingdom. This is the temple. He says, what, what agreement had the temple of Elohim with idol? So why would he idolize this body? Why would there be idol here, idol here, idol there, idol there? And yet some people say, oh, don't look at my body, look at my inward. No, you're getting it wrong. You can't give God your heart, but your flesh and your body is not, give, it's not given to him. No, you can't give him your heart and your flesh is, going, is given to somewhere in the catwalk industry. It cannot happen. It cannot. He needs total, total. He says, I'm a jealous God. You can serve me and serve Mammon. Look at it here. What agreement are the temple of Elohim with idol? With idolatry? With the cares of this life? With the deceitfulness of riches? And ye are the temple of the living God. As Elohim has said, I will dwell in them. Hallelujah. He will come to dwell. In a clean heart. You can't say the heart is clean. You know, there's a cup we have. It says, is the what is in it is what counts. That's good. 
But if that if that cup looks dirty on the outside, nobody will even touch it in the first instance. Not to talk, it takes extra grace to look in words. If that cup, cup is covered with, you know, smudges and then foot particles and everything, everybody's mind goes, oh, that's an infection. They wouldn't even know that the inner is thoroughly washed. They won't go for it. So he says, God, the Elohim says there that we, he will dwell in them and walk with them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Excellent. One, he will dwell in us. So he's coming for a house without spot or wrinkle. I will walk with them. So which means he will not be ashamed to walk alongside with us. He will hold our hands. We, he will be so proud of us. We dress alike. We look alike. We have the same steps. He's so proud. You know, when you're walking, you know, some people say, oh, ah, the, my day was made. I went with the chief executive and I was up to them. That's their bucket list. To them, they will say, oh, I was invited. An apostle was telling us and they, what do you call it now? The walk in uh, California, what do they call it? The star walk. walk. Ah, some people take Los pride Angeles. in Los Angeles to go and put their legs where they wrote the names of the stars to see that they walked with the stars. They walked with the stars. But Elohim says, I will walk with you. Mm. Amen. That's wonderful. He will walk with you. He will walk with me. So how are we prepared? Are we dressed so well? In his own way, so that when he comes, he will identify us. So that when he's walking with us, he will be proud. He says, I will be their God. I'll be their father. I'll be their Elohim. I'll be their maker. Hallelujah. And they shall be my people. So, brethren, for those of us who have not read these, and you're struggling with what to give up and what not to give up, may this place minister to you. Amen. And you're struggling. For 20 years you've been struggling over the flesh. You do not want to give up. Over what you do not want to give up. Not knowing that that is the chink in the armor. Not knowing that that is the thorn in your flesh. Why? For 25 years you've been in the Lord. For 30 years you've been in the Lord. You've been doing this. Why? Because you can't live among the thorns and you will be a stable Christian. Everything will take you off. But let's continue. And the Bible says the cares of this world. First John chapter 2, 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you love him, there's no way you will love the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of this flesh. I want you to touch this flesh and I'll come back to it. The more you can, touch it. Touch it. And we get back to it. Touch them. Touch it. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. Mm, gone. Go in. Gone. They will be gone. Everything in it. No one is being buried with their houses. I've not seen a, a graveyard that took him um, five or ten bedroom houses and house and then with the owner all inside. No, not seen. That is if you if you die where you can be picked up. A lot have died where they cannot be seen. And that's it. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now mm. let's take it care of this world they love not this world do anyone love it now nobody everybody's looting it everybody has looted everything the world and the mindset of people the world can never remain the same and it's not the same it has completely changed with this pandemic that happened it has changed dramatically perspective have changed the way of seeing things have changed the things that were held in value you will find out that everything collapsed some industries are going to close because people wouldn't bother anymore they wouldn't bother anymore we've been on our own for weeks fear had creeped everyone people had literally 
spat out those things they counted as valuable before is no more there. Brethren, if that's why Jesus, the Bible said to us, here in, John said to us in First John, do not love this world. And Jesus says, what will it profit you to gain? And in our eyes, everything gone, collapsed, dwindling. Who can help each other? Nobody can help. And he says there, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, flesh representing not just the physical body, one is the outer is the physical body, inner is in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are the are manifest and they are these, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, evil speaking, all that, read it, all in the spiritual flesh. They don't profit. An outer flesh, when you are done this flesh, some people are not giving themselves to the Lord because they take particular care. They will not pay their fight, but they will buy a cream of 750 pounds to rub on their body, the body that will decay and go back to the sand. Mm. They take time. Oh, when their salary comes, they will make sure that everything to adore themselves, ranging up to 2,500 a month, they need to keep it. Now they've been in those. When you look at so many people on, um, what do you call it now? On Zoom, you're like, huh? Is this this person? <laughs> the masks are all gone. <laughs> the powders are all gone. You are not seeing the natural person. You are not seeing them in their element because they are sitting in their houses and you're looking at them. I was telling a person, I said, I saw one and I was like, I took, huh? is this this person? So everything I've been seeing is what? Mask. Where are those masks? No pleasure in them anymore. Those big, no pleasure. The Bible says, and the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, what you see, what you grab. A lot of people, we don't discern when people are lost of the eyes. They gallivant everywhere they want to see. And in going to see, they fall into sin, but they will not tell you. They come back not themselves anymore. What drove them? The lust of the eyes. Go and see. Go remember Diana, the daughter of Jacob. He went to see the daughter's sons of men and that was how she was defiled how many of us just want to go want to see want to grab the lust of the eyes i see this i want it i see that i want it oh where did you get the shoe oh i got it in peru <clears throat> next holiday goes to peru they want to go and buy it where did you get this dress oh i got it in uh, morocco next holiday off to morocco they're going there to say where did you get this lust of the eyes they want to see everything grab pride of life whoa they are so proud, not only what they have. They are so proud the way the Lord made them. And I ask myself, did you make yourself green or black or yellow? You had no part in your making. It is Elohim that made you. So why are you proud? You are the way you are because the Lord made you for his pleasure. So taking pride in the way you look, you are tall, you are short, you are fat, you are slim, you are this, you are that. You can see makes no, has no basis. Actually, is one of the silly things to, to be done because you didn't create yourself. You didn't contribute one inch to putting one eyelash to your eyes. No, it has nothing to do with you. So you're boasting with what doesn't belong to you. So did you see it? How can you boast with what is not yours? What you can't even help? The day it's finished, it will pack off and go back to the grave. You have no influence over it. So why would you pride of life for what you can gain? The brain that you used in manufacturing things, let me tell you, you are not better than the one you think is a mongo. Not at all. It is the Lord that allowed it, gave it to you. It does not belong to you. The day you finish with it, you pack and go. So why would we boast pride of life? Even in the church, some people boast because they are apostles, they are prophets. They are, oh, don't you know I am the prophet in the house? And because of that pride of life, sweep them off like a wind immediately. They need to be recognized, to be seen as somebody. They are gone because they are pastors in the church. That's why pride has come. They can't sit with other people. They wear a special robe to be, you know, to be distincted. And they're given names. And you take those names. Somebody called you his grace and you agree. You're gone. You're weighed and found wanted. You're like Nebuchadnezzar. I pray the Lord will help you to say no more today. 
and they carry your Bible. Ah, somebody's carrying your sword. What happens when the enemy strikes you? What will you do? You go before you reach out to say, Give me my sword, you are gone. No general takes off his ammunition off mm. there. It is always no policeman keep his gun in the car and ask somebody to hold it for them. Is you always right there at their belt. What are we doing? Pride of life. Because the Lord has blessed you with one gift or the other, you forgot how you started. You forgot where you were coming from. You forgot who you were and the Lord picked you up. Now pride has come and you want to run off. But the Bible says they are comforting word. But he that doeth the will of Elohim will abide, abide forever. And continue. The Bible says in Romans 9, 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of the Lord. They are not the children of Elohim. Not can they be. But the children of promise are counted for the sick. So when you of the world, God says, I am a child of God. Check all through. We're taking our time now because we don't want to leave any stone unturned. We don't want to boast ourselves of being in the Lord. And for so many years, we don't want to boast ourselves for being in the... Um, one capacity or the other or being in the church no we don't want to look at the world and point fingers at them don't point fingers at anyone now look inwards to yourself first Peter chapter 4 1 to 4 bear with us we're locked down so there is no hurry amen we're relaxing let's enjoy this word for a few more minutes first Peter chapter 4 1 to 4 for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live in the rest of this time. And in the flesh to the lust of men. But to the will of Elohim. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. We've left those days, those years. They are back. We've left them. They were the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. Wow. These are all. Don't bring them into the church. No. No. Don't bring them into the new temple. No. Don't bring them into the gathering. Mm -mm. It's not acceptable. That's not the new place. It will look awkward. That's not the correct uniform. That's not the correct dress. You will stand out very quickly because um, you are dressed otherwise. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. Speaking evil of you. That's it. Are you that brother, that sister? You're in the church and you're speaking evil of holiness. Stop it. Are you have you been battling it and trying to get other brothers and sisters and in their simplicity they don't know you are trying to rope them into what you don't want to give up be careful stop speaking evil of those who are making it just follow and learn and follow along join them the bible says when you don't walk in lasciviousness again in those lost in excess of wine, revelings, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. You look at people, they, some of them look at the queen standing in the, uh, in the court of the I, I'm idolatrous and what presence. Why would you do that, a child of God? Why? It doesn't matter. No. Can't you see? Don't idolize. Don't fancy those things. Is because of those things that the Lord destroyed those nations to bring Israel in. Don't do it. And wherein also don't think they think it's strange. Don't feel bad if they think you're not in those in that kind of life anymore. Don't think it's strange. Because with them, because you're not running with them. So don't feel if I don't look at them, they will no no no. They will speak evil, they wouldn't want you, they will talk at the back, they will bite bite. They will make insinuations, they will make statements all around and say, oh, they want us to look like them. No, this is the scriptures. There is therefore no condemnation in Romans chapter 8, 
Verse 1 and 2. Let's see. There is now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Unfortunately, most translations took away who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if your Bible do not have who walk not after the flesh, after the spirit, you pick up the doctrine of eternal security, which is only they use just one line to qualify themselves. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, through the sin nature. Wow. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That's exactly what happened on the day we gave our life to the Lord. He condemned sin in our flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are in the spirit, the things of the spirit. May the Lord help us today to mind the things. Because the carnal mind is an enmity, enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of Elohim neither indeed can be we're still reading romans chapter 8 from verse 9 and we've read 7 now let's read verse 9 but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man had not the spirit of christ he's none of his and if christ be in you and the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up Yeshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. So it's possible to live above the flesh. Because if Yahweh could raise him up, our Messiah, he is also able to raise us. Amen. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For he that live after the flesh shall die. If you do that, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. Hallelujah. And we want to live with him forever. For as many as are led by the spirit of Elohim, they are his sons. I love this chapter verse 14. As many, my prayer today is that, May the Lord lead you into more truth, into more opening your eyes. May he help you not to knock off, not to get tired, not to leave, but to dwell and enjoy and say, to me, Father, I want you to lead me. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, according to Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap, reap life everlasting. And every man that striveth for the mastery, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 to 27, he says, is temperate in all things. Now, that they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Please don't beat the air for 20 years. No need. Don't beat the air for 25 years. No. Don't beat the air for 10 years. Don't beat the air for those of us who just gave their lives to the Lord. Make up your mind. You are not going to beat the air. You are going to make the main thing the main thing. But Paul said there, but I keep my body. But I keep under my body and bring it onto subjection. Lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. May that be where we will be. To bring this body under subjection, always under scrutiny, always under intense watching so that we don't slip off. And finally, he said there, Peter and Luke added on top of the whole thing, becomes unfruitful. They bring no fruit to perfection. Imagine someone who is in the flesh, lost of the eyes cares of this world they can't bring any fruit to perfection no way 
they will go into being a pastors, but the people under them can never be perfected. They will go in to be teachers. They have nothing to teach. They get the word from the surface. And people come to church and listen for 30 minutes. And an hour, they go back the same because there's no root, no depth in what they are teaching. They become evangelists. They go out there and sweat and bring no shoes in because they tell stories instead of the gospel. Can you imagine? They are prophets. They bring nothing because they prophesy from their heart and from their heart and from their pride and from their oratory capacity. Nothing. They are apostles. They answer. But you cannot have any record of what they've done, any new grounds they've dug, any church, any visiting, nothing. Their profile is zero plus zero plus zero. But they have that name. They are in the church and Bible, they are deacons in the church, but they sit on empty seats. Empty, empty. There's no example to the church. They are not husbands of one wife. They are not kept. They are women leaders. What are they selling to people in the church? Lost vanity. What are they selling to the other women in the church? Worldliness from beginning to the end. And sex. This group, that group, that group. Before you know it, competition starts in the church. I tell you. You know, when we started, this may not look well, but not everyone. But look at the spirit of sex in the church. Brethren, it may look okay. This group, the other group, the other group, Deborah group, this group, this group. Before you know it now, it's competition. Oh, on harvest days, they are competing. This happens in Africa. Apostle and I know what we're, what that we're telling you. In our own eyes, you may belong to that church. Where is all about who gave the best? Oh, on the days of Thanksgiving, which group we dressed the best? Oh, brethren, it's at that point. I pity the poor sisters in those groups. They will be running around looking for where to borrow the wrappers and the dresses and gowns and then the big peacock hairstyle to look at like others. What do you think will happen? Because this group wore red this time. So next year, we have, it's all about competition, what they can do. But that wasn't the initial thing. The initial thing and then the mind was that this group will behave like Deborah. This group will behave like Esther. The root of Mary will be, and the kind of Mary, the mother of Jesus, could be seen. But what happens? Satan takes over and forms it. This group, that group. Watch that the church you pastor is not in such a thing. But that's why we say the priesthood of every believer. And what that group does, oh, women wash the church and clean and tidy. Why the men sit in upper seats and deacons? No way. We know way. Henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. The women are not there to sweep and clean the church. A man can sweep and clean the church. I live in United Kingdom and the celebrity chefs are all men. They are all run by men. They are the ones doing the cooking. All through our restaurants when you get there is the men. So belonging to a society that tells you women belongs to the kitchen, it cannot work. So brethren, Please, all these things are the things that have made people to be sown among thorns. Ask the Lord, which are the thorns around me choking my life? I'm now in lockdown. Thank you, Lord, for locking me down so that I can take time to look in world. A lot of us are so busy. 5 a.m., they're already in their car, traveling to their two and a half hour walk, um, journey to work. So off they go. And when they finish at 5.30 with traffic, they get in about 9 o'clock, the day is gone. No time to pray, no time to look into their life, no time to care. And the only way they can pacify themselves is get, 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 and all that. They keep them in the house, they can't use them. One year, two years, you find out that what you kept, you have not. This is a beautiful time. What are the thorns that have choked my spiritual life? That has choked my physical life. That has choked my mental life. That has choked my psychological life. Father, we pray today. Every tongue, O oh Lord. All the thumbs of life. 
Oh, the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this life, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes that has made us unfruitful. Even when we bear the fruit, nobody can eat it. Nobody. Oh, it is it, 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 so tiny. It, it, it just it is. Father, I pray, oh Lord, that you will take them away. Every unfruitfulness, all the laboring and we have nothing. Oh, that you say, depart from me, I do not know you, you workers of iniquity, because their fruit, their, they, bore on, they were unfruitful. Lord, take them away. All the thorns that have made us to be unfruitful, take them away. Heavenly Father, with all our heart, as we are in this lockdown, in one week or the other now, everybody pushes out. Help us, Lord not to miss this opportunity. Everything that needs to be rounded up, mopped up, that we use this week, we're going in, Lord, to mop up everything. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, we thank the Lord for birthdays today, Minister Salom and Salome Solomon of 2020 Masterclass from Lusaka and Zambia. Happy birthday to you, my beloved Minister and Salome, Pastor Ruth Issa of Nigeria. Today is her birthday. Sister Micheline Georges. Wow, a beautiful friend with a family in New Jersey. Today is her birthday. Um, Sister Micheline, may the Lord bless you. And then many Apostle Candace Star. Wow, hallelujah. Apostle Candace, we shout out to you. Happy birthday to you. She's the overseer of Citadel of Truth and Faith Ministries for Pears, Florida. Apostle Candace, happy birthday. Princess Nancy, Nancy Kelly Locadia from South Africa, happy birthday to you. And then um, Sister Hannah Akintayo of London, happy birthday to you. We we'll pray for them on the, the bread. And intercessors, please remember the four o'clock. Um, training and then please come on on the line not just you invite friends invite intercessors of churches for this training may the lord bless you